What's up, Navigating Academia family? This is your buddy, Dr. Jay Phoenix Singh, coming at you to be able to have a very brief discussion today about an email that I just received. And I'll tell you that when you get into academia, uh, it's something where you will ironically receive quite a few emails like this. And I think that I'm going to start a sub-series where any time that I get an email like this, which I think is kind of a really good exemplar, I'm going to make a video for you guys. Especially when you're beginning in academia, I remember when I did, uh, and I was first putting out, you know, initial publications and all, and I would start to get invitations. I would start to get invitations to be able to uh, submit to give keynotes at conferences. I, I would get invited, right? Sometimes not even to submit. I would get invited to be the keynote speaker at conferences. I would get invited to submit book proposals. I would get invited to submit articles to journals with very fancy names, right? International Journal of Forensic Psychiatric Practice. Oh my gosh, International Journal. Wow, such a big deal. Or the conferences would be, you know, uh, Global Congress on Psychiatric Best Practices. Wow, Global Conference. These things usually sound very fancy. Or they could have something in the name of, let's say, the, the publishing house that, let's talk about books for a second, the publishing house, which sounds super legitimate. So, for example, in this email, as we go, we'll go through, it's not Cambridge University Press, but it has the name Cambridge in it. Or maybe it has Oxford in the name or Harvard in the name, so on and so forth, but it's not affiliated in any way, shape, or form with Oxford or with Cambridge or with Harvard in terms of the universities. But they know that those names grant legitimacy to them, right? Now, over the years, obviously, I have come to recognize that I consider these types of publishers to be predatory. And yes, sometimes they actually are predatory, like in the case of predatory open access journals. If you want to learn about that and how to be able to find lists of predatory publishers and the names of predatory journals, even predatory bibliometrics, like different versions of impact factor, which are not legit, but are used to manipulate you as the author, then just watch the best practices and open science module on Publication Academy. So remember, Publication Academy is at www.publicationacademy.com. Or you can start a conversation with me on Patreon because we have an exclusive chat community there. You can ask for specific video topics, live stream topics, so on and so forth. So that's patreon.com backslash navigating academia if you want to learn more about that kind of stuff. Um, but when it comes to these types of publishers, I would just say they're manipulative. I don't know if I would call them predatory or not, but they're manipulative. Uh, it's same thing when it comes to conferences that invite you to be a keynote speaker or invite you to submit. Yeah, they're going to invite you to submit so you can pay them money to go to the conference. They'll invite you to be a keynote, but if you actually click, you're going to find out that you have to still pay to go to the conference. And in addition to that, usually you have to pay a fee to be able to keynote. That's ridiculous. That is manipulation. This is something I always tell you guys, follow the money in academia and you're going to learn so much stuff about how the system works and how to play the game. So it's emails like this where I don't feel bad whatsoever in terms of exposing publishers, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at this one. So I got this email this morning, right? I don't, have no idea how they got, you know, my name. Probably what happens is that they go on to something like Google Scholar and they take a look for who has verified accounts. Uh, and literally they'll have, you know, bots that do this for them to generate these lists. Uh, of verified email addresses from something like Google Scholar. So this is called, all in caps, invitation to submit a book proposal. Sounds exciting. If I was somebody who hadn't published five books and didn't know what I was talking about when it comes to publishing houses, I'd probably be taken in like that and say, wow, this person read my work and this is such an honor to be asked. Okay, so this is by somebody named Rebecca Gladders at CambridgeScholars.com. Okay, so let's go ahead and read this. Dear Dr. Singh, Cambridge Scholars Publishing, that's the name of the publishing house. Notice how they have Cambridge in there. Scholars, wow, sounds so official. Are inviting proposals for academic books and edited collections in health sciences. You see how that's bold and italicized? Okay, the reason for that is because they're just going to put anything in there, right? This is an automated email that's kind of getting sent to all these people, okay? So health sciences for somebody else, it could be psychological sciences for somebody else, it could be art history. These guys will always have different quote-unquote collections, as many as they conceivably can, okay? Why? Because it's very, it's like the equivalent of self-publishing. It's very inexpensive for these folks to publish these books. Essentially, all it's going to cost them is a typesetting fee, 
right? They're not going to have a copy editor go through all of your stuff. They, they'll say that they will, and then they'll get a really cheap copy editing service to be able to go through to make it seem legitimate, right? And at the end of the day, you're going to have a book that looks fancy because it's typeset, but that's very cheap to do with something like Latex, right? Latex is a software platform, right? Uh, publishing platform in terms of typesetting, right? That makes something look legit, like it's part of a, a legit journal or a legit book, right? Uh, so it's going to look fancy. They will literally go on to Shutterstock, right? And pay somebody uh, a very small amount, maybe a hundred bucks to be able to design a cover, right? And it'll look really legit, but they're only going to publish publish that book in terms of print one when somebody buys it. Otherwise, it's just on the website and they'll have fancy titles and it'll look fancy. It is so cheap to do this, I'm telling you right now, okay? And what ends up happening is that probably nobody will buy it or you want to know who will buy it? You. You, your friends, your family, okay? That's who's going to end up buying it. Maybe your university is going to actually, like library is going to buy a copy of this thing. But outside of that, you know, people just want to say that they're published authors. I published a book. That's what they want to say, right? But remember, there are five publishers that publish over 90% of all academic books. Wiley, Sage, Springer, Elsevier, and Rutledge, i.e. Taylor and Francis, right? That's it, okay? There's, you know, 10%, there's literally over 2,000 different publishers, right? But those five publish over 90%, right? So if you're going to publish a book, publish it with one of them or their sub-publishing houses, okay? Don't get drawn in by this nonsense, okay? So here we go. We would be pleased if you would consider submitting a proposal. Cambridge Scholars Publishing are committed, first of all, it is committed, right? To supporting long-form research dissemination in all our fields, what? of academic and scholarly publishing. Academic publishing is scholarly publishing. Uh, through the publication of monographs and edited collect, you literally just said that, right, in the preceding day. See, even the grammar is not good. I don't know who on earth is doing this kind of stuff. They need to hire somebody new. This is, and will remain, our core focus in the years ahead. We publish in all major fields of academic research and practice, including, see these things right here? These are all things, again, that just like health sciences, will be auto-generated, okay? Um, you can read more about our approach to, quote, doing simple things well, this is idiotic, okay, in the No Shelf Required online magazine. People love to call things online magazines or have really bad quality blogs or bad quality digital newsletters and this kind of stuff, okay? Cost them no money. It's a web page on their site. I'm sure if we go to it, the formatting is going to be garbage as well. Next, 2021 marks the 20th anniversary of our foundation in Cambridge, UK. Again, grammar's terrible. Yes, it's in Cambridge, right? But probably, it literally is something like a P.O. box or something like this. Could be somebody's house, or it seems like a legit location, right? This is what they do. You can literally in the UK, right, because I have many friends who run companies in the UK, you can literally just go to a WeWork or go to one of these office buildings and just have a postal address there because it legitimizes this illegitimate work. I consider it illegitimate because I consider it manipulative. Over that time, we have grown to be one of the world's leading scholarly book publishers. Bullshit. We call that puffery, right? It is a legal way to manipulatively market your work. This is like somebody in the U.S. starting a, I don't know, a, a chicken restaurant and saying world famous chicken. It's a world famous chicken. It's barely known by the guy who's lived down the street his whole life, Okay. So don't trust anything that says that. With a backlist of more than 8,000 titles. First of all, if you ever see a 1,000 without a comma, red flag. Second, yeah, 8,000 titles. You really think that they're selling those? No, this is not how book publication works, guys. This is just puffery to be able to make things seem fancy. And more than 700 academic books. What? How can you have 8,000 titles but 700 academic books? It doesn't make sense. What are the titles? What are they talking about? Cambridge Scholars Publishing Limited, limited, that means it's a for-profit company, is not affiliated to, what? Affiliated with, see, this is because they probably got sued that they say this. Cambridge University Publishing Limited is not affiliated to or associated with Cambridge University Press University of Cambridge. Womp. Okay, this is why, and you guys can tell that I'm really frustrated about this, because they're going to manipulate you into spending years, at least one year, busting your butt to write a book so they can make money. This is nonsense. Cambridge Scholars Publishing aim, no, they, oh, it, it aims, it's singular, 
to put our authors at the heart of everything we do. It doesn't make sense. We bring that ambition into our publishing operations with our author promises. This is just nonsense, okay? And then they're going to give these things. Fast, fair, and friendly proposal review. I guarantee you that their acceptance rate is 90% or above. It just seems legitimate when they say they're going to review it. Second, publication in handsome hardback. What? As well as ebook formats, okay, for our academic library customers. Worldwide distribution, to, that just means it's on the internet and they can ship things to research and study centers. What does that mean? Across the globe, that's redundant worldwide. Via, there's no need for a comp, via our international network, including Amazon. Oh my gosh, guys, that's ridiculous. This is just fulfillment by Amazon. That's ridiculous, right? A book published with us is always in stock. Of course it is. It's online and they only print it. Oh my gosh, guys, this is driving me nuts. They only print it when somebody orders it. That's why it's always in stock or it's always in stock because they print it. Then nobody buys it, right? Which isn't good for you. And always available for sale. Thanks to our unique print on time global distribution system. That's what I'm saying. Print on time. And they're making it seem like this is something good for you. An escalating royalty payment. The more titles sold, the higher the royalty rate from the first copy sold. Guys, this that seems great. It's not. Okay, what that means is either the initial royalty rate is going to be ridiculously low or it'll be ridiculously high because they know that they're not going to sell a lot of copies of the thing. Okay, no charges for publication. Okay, so that makes it seem like it's non-predatory. Okay, there's no charges for publication, but you're also not going to make any money. Okay, you're, you're going to make enough to be able to buy three Snickers bars at best per year. Okay, that's what's going to end up happening here. Don't be pulled in by this nonsense. Our authors can also contribute to our unique book and focus series, which you can read more about on our website. No, to submit a book proposal, go here to this form, find out more about us. Okay, so this is the senior commissioning editor. Sounds legit, right? Let's just take a look down here. Operational headquarters are in historic Lady Stevenson Library. Wow, sounds so fancy, right? With representative offices in all these different countries. Oh, wow. Okay, it's not affiliate. Again, look at how they've had to bolt this, right? Again, probably because they ended up getting sued, right? Obviously, update your, pro update your profile. I don't even have a profile. I didn't sign up for this. Just unsubscribe. Nonsense. Okay, so here's proposal review. First of all, this is a terribly ugly website with very poor formatting. Okay, happy to be able to receive complete a proposal form. Okay. Within six weeks, this is very short, right? So you need a minimum of one sample chapter. So that suggests you've already done the work in the standard CV. Oy. Okay, let's see. Online proposal form. What do we got? Complete the form below. Okay, let's see. So you've got your contact details, your bio, your mailing address, previous publications, topics of your book, abstract, in one sentence, describe your book. This is not standard can be used for promotion. Okay, so you haven't even written the thing, but you're already going to try to promote it. Okay, uh, list draft table of contents, standard stuff. How can the estimate be between 3,500 and 200,000 words, right? Let's see, or sorry, 35,000 thousand words, two pages, 70 pages. How on earth are you going to have a hardback 70 page book? That, that means because it's 70 pages, that's the equivalent because it's back and forth of a 35-page book. Have you ever bought a hardcover version of a 35-page book? Ridiculous. Okay. They go through here. Permissions, marketing, da 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 The funny thing is, guys, is this is something called the foot-in-the-door marketing method. Okay. Foot-in-the-door marketing method means that literally they just know that if you do all this work that you've really bought into this. Okay. Don't obviously do this online if you're ever going to do it because the likelihood is something will end up happening halfway through where your data, your information will be lost. So definitely do a PDF version. This is the main website, right, of these guys, okay? Cambridge Scholars Publishing. Uh, anytime you have a stupid little logo like this or whatever, just assume that this is not legit, okay? Oh, having built, uh, you know, dozens of websites myself, this is very poor quality in terms of the uh, the formatting of the thing, right? Uh, here, like, especially just having, like, a home thing. What on earth is going on here, right? Author promises, published with us, right? Even taking a look at some of these things, these are not even high resolution. Take a look at the pixelation in the plane when I take this away, right? 
So it's not even high resolution images. These are not high resolution. Look, guys. Th this doesn't make any sense, right? And by the way, literally all of these things can very easily be acquired from, from Shutterstock and these types of platforms, okay? And like I said, 100 bucks, they can get this sort of thing, right? Authors, okay, experiences, featured title, book and focus, right? And again, wow, ooh, editor's choice. Okay, well, here's the problem, guys, is where's the apostrophe? Right? These sorts of things, best sellers, well, it makes it seem like they're selling a lot. Maybe they've sold two copies. We have no idea, right? Down here, you've got all these sorts of things, right? Again, unsubscribe. They even have to have a link on it. Let's do this. Okay, where, where do they send this to me? Which he, okay, Jason Zurich. Okay. Let's go in here. Jason Zurich. You are predatory. Stop contacting me. There we go. I'm not a robot either. Submit request. Get me out of here. You'll be removed in the next 72 hours. Good. Okay. So, guys, never agree to submit a proposal to a non-legitimate publisher like this who's trying to manipulate you to get you to spend years of your time to be able to make them money. If you're ever uncertain about whether or not something is you know, predatory or not, for the love of God, put it in the comments below and let's talk about it, okay? Thank you, apologies for my uh, frustrated tone, but uh, this is not my first rodeo with these things and I have seen dear friends of mine as well as dear mentees of mine get taken in by this kind of nonsense. Everybody thinks that academia is like this insanely objective thing and as you guys know from this channel, there's a lot of riffraff and this is an example of it. Peace.